Here's the truth about how I taught myself to code and got a job as a software engineer in just 4 months. So by far the most popular video on my channel is my how I learned to code in 4 months video. Now at more than 1 million views which is just insane. And I realized that in that video I didn't go too much into details about exactly how I learned to go and it was rather just a chronological step by step of what I did to learn to code. So in this video I want to focus on the how of how I learned to code in 4 months. And for this I've identified 3 main factors. First is hard work. There's just no escaping it. If you want to learn anything fast or achieve anything, you just gotta put in the hours. I was in a fortunate position where I was actually taking a gap year during the time when I was learning to code, which meant that I didn't have a job or full-time studies or anything like that. So I was able to focus solely on teaching myself to code, but we'll go into exactly how many hours I was doing each day in just a moment. Second is luck. I openly admit in that other video as well that especially how I actually got my software engineer job offer was pretty lucky. Any success requires some luck but the key is to not focus on that and I do also believe that I made my own luck so we'll also talk about that and thirdly I believe I did the right things as in I focused on the most essential things first and this is really key if you want to learn anything fast you got to know what's important and that's a lot what I share on this channel my strategies my techniques my resources and in this third section we'll talk more specifically on how I was able to work smart and organize my studies intelligently when I was learning to code. So we'll dive deeper into all of those in just a second. First, before you're even able to get started learning to code, you obviously need a good laptop that doesn't lag like some of my previous potato computers. This is my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which cost $4,000. And in order to afford a laptop like this, you first need to become financially responsible and learn to invest your money wisely. Now you might think that the only option is stocks and bonds, but what if I told you that there's a new asset class which has beat the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021? And that is art. And you might say, well, that's great, but I don't have the money to invest in art. That's only for millionaires, right? Well, not if you use today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is the only platform where you can invest in art just like two thirds of billionaires do, but for just a fraction of what they pay. Through Masterworks, you can invest in a portion of many exclusive pieces of art. So far, Masterworks has successfully offered and sold three paintings with each realizing a net annualized gain of above 30% per work. As a legal disclaimer, this is not necessarily an indication of Masterworks' overall performance and past performance is not indicative of future results. But nevertheless, 30% is very impressive. And getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It just takes a few clicks. You just visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can start diversifying your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. And what is more, you can gain priority access by clicking my link down below in the description, and you can become one of the over 400,000 people who have already signed up. Big thank you for Masterworks for sponsoring this video, but do note that I am not your financial advisor and you should always do your own research. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I define having learned to code as knowing enough to get your first job. I don't claim to be great, I don't claim to be an expert software engineer, just someone who's learned enough to get my first job. So I started teaching myself to code around July of 2021. This was when I had just graduated from university with my economics degree, and because I was still figuring out what I wanted to do, I decided to take a year off. Because I didn't have a full-time job or study or anything, I was simply able to put in like double the hours every day compared to most people learning to code alongside their jobs or full-time studies or whatever. Everyone's been asking me, so if you want a number, it was maybe five to even six hours every single day into coding slash tech slash computer science related things. So really coding is just like any other skill. You just need to put in enough practice and eventually you will learn. There's this great rule that people often reference, which is like a 10,000 hour rule, which essentially suggests that you need 10,000 hours of deliberate practice in a skill or a craft or whatever to really master it. And I don't think I've put in 10,000 hours yet, because as I said, I'm not an expert yet. I'm just a guy still figuring it out essentially. But the point here is that it's just about putting in enough hours of actual proper practice and you will just learn eventually there's just no magical thing about it and in terms of how i was able to keep myself disciplined and motivated during that time really it just boils down to the fact i really really wanted the end result and i was really really interested in actually learning to code and i'm really glad 
I sort of stumbled on, upon this area because I did not have the same passion for my previous studies in economics, for example. So whenever I wasn't feeling too motivated, I would just remind myself of my why, of the actual reason why I was doing this in the first place. And that would usually get me on track. And when none of that works, you just do it. You really just have to do it. The second factor is luck. I can't lie. I can't deny it. I'm also extremely lucky in a bunch of different ways. The way my job offer happened is that during the summer of 2021, I was doing a business internship at a big consulting firm in London. And it turns out that I was in the technology division of that consulting firm. And during this time, I was also teaching myself to code, being really excited about it and all of that. So it turns out that their consulting firm were also employing software engineers. And because I did a good job, they were willing to offer me a full-time position at the firm one year after the internship. So that would be starting in September of 2022. So in a couple of months, I just asked them essentially, is it possible to get that return offer as a software engineer instead of a business analyst, which is what I was doing for my internship. And because I was able to convince them of my passion and my motivation for technology and coding, they were able to give me that offer because this is a really big firm and they have the resources to train people. So they didn't really even mind that I didn't have any experience. All I had to do is convince them of my willingness and ability to learn. So as you can see, the fact that I have happened to be doing an internship at a firm like that is just super lucky. Like I can't deny that. But at the same time, I did also make my own luck. The thing about luck is that it often happens to the people who do a lot of things, who go out there to seek opportunities. Had I not been a good employee and a good intern at that company, they wouldn't have even given me any return over at all. Had I not put in the effort to learn about tech, I would not have been able to communicate a passion and a willingness to learn about it to my managers. Often people who look at other people who are successful tend to attribute it to luck. Like, oh, they just got lucky. Oh, he just had this and this opportunity, which would never have happened to me. Whereas people who actually succeed often attribute it to skill. And I think the truth is always in between. There's always some luck and there's always some skill with any level of success. The key is to not focus on the luck and just put in the work, try to learn as much as possible, go seek out opportunities, and the luck will eventually come to you. That's how the world seems to work. But beyond that, obviously I'm lucky in a bunch of other ways as well. I'm lucky to be born in a first world country where I have access to education that is able to build me the logical thinking skills that's required to even learn to code in the first place. I'm lucky to have the opportunity where I can have enough money to buy a computer for me to code with and have access to internet in the country where I live in. But we're all lucky in some ways and it's just about making the most of the situation that we happen to be in. The last thing that contributed to me being able to learn so fast is that I didn't just put in a lot of hours, I put in the right kinds of hours and I had a plan from the start. Through really taking my time to first learn about what I need to learn and really what is most important to prioritize, I was able to focus on what really matters. Whenever I learn something, the way I think about it is as if I'm sort of peeling off layers of a potato. This is a really weird analogy, but let me explain. When you're first getting into learning something, it's super, super important that you learn to identify the factors that are most important at the stage you are. For example, when you're just learning the basics, there's no point in you going to some obscure computer science concept because that's not important in the beginning stages. In the beginning stages, you just want to focus on the outermost layer, the broad context around the tech world, around what coding is, what it even means, the basics of how computers work, these kinds of things. So you can get some sort of a general high level idea of what you're getting into. And step two will be to go more into the specifics of learning the basics of some programming language. And then as you sort of peel off these outer layers of the basics of the foundations, you get deeper and deeper into these more specific areas. But I would say perhaps paradoxically, like the beginning, you should deliberately try to ignore some details that are just not as important as some other thing that you could be learning at any given stage. I have really familiarized myself with what I need to learn first before I even got into learning anything specific. There's so many great resources online that really already do the work for you of prioritizing the most important things. The course I always recommend people start with is CS50 by Howard University that you can do online completely free. I have a review about it on my channel. I always talk about it. After that, I always recommend Zero to Mastery's coding courses when you sort of have an 
an idea of what coding is and that kind of thing. You will have some idea of what you want to learn first. So for example, if you want to be a web developer, you can do Zero to Master is very popular full web development bootcamp. If you want to get into Python, you can do their full Python bootcamp. So Zero to Master is really a place where you can pick on which path you want to take. They also have a full course on how to pass coding interviews, which I've done myself. It's really great. And so many of you guys have been telling me that you really enjoy their courses. So that's why I keep talking about them. And I am their proud affiliate. So if you want to get 10% off, you can use the code down below in the description. So that is really the truth about how I learned to code in four months and got a job as a software engineer. And lastly, on the topic of working smart, there's a lot of different specific strategies and methods I use to ensure that I'm most productive and to make sure that I'm really using every hour in the most effective way possible. If you want to learn more about that, I made this video about it on how I learned to work smart, not just hard when learning to code. And if you want to see my original video as more of a chronological step by step of what I did to learn to code in four months, you can watch this video right here. It's the most successful video on my channel. With that, I'll see you next time.